I just want to reiterate what Murray said. Um, dialysis access is going to be your gateway drug in a vascular surgery. When you graduate, it's, you're not going to be doing fenestrated EVARs and snorkel and people, you know, all that stuff. This is what you will be doing. Okay, so um, has anybody heard of the Fistula First Breakthrough Initiative? Okay. Um, so the goal, uh, the original goal in 2005 was to have um, most dialysis um, centers have 66% of their patients have AV fistulas. Um, and as the years went by, there was an increased number of fistulas instead of catheters, which is good news. Um, and then in 2015, they... Um, came back with an, a new goal, which was to have 68% of the patients have AV fistulas with only, um, with less than 10% of the patients long-term catheters defined as more than three months duration. SVS put out guidelines, um, more so to say, you know, not, we were not going to concentrate just on AV fistulas, but a functional access, whether that be a graft in some patients, but um, something that would work and be dependable for that patient. <clears throat> so in terms of um, your access planning and your pre-op pre -op management, you know, doing a um, complete a history and physical, as well as looking at that particular patient, because everybody's going to be different. You'll see complex access patients. You'll see younger patients in their 20s, elderly patients. I have a patient who's 95 um, and still hanging on. Um, and so in those particular patients, you want to look, well, who, what's best for them? Is it a fistula? Is it a graft? Um, so this is just a chart, I, I think, out of Rutherford, but um, looking at some of the criteria. Um, so for AV fistula, um, you know, younger patients um, f and patients who have um, HIV, like Murray said, would you would rather have a fistula. Um, if they have a hypercoagulable disorder, a fistula is better because grafts are likelier to clot off. Um, in prosthetic, as, uh, for uh, grafts, if somebody, you know, the high Helens, you ever see like the huge arms? Is that appropriate to say? But in those patients, graft may be better because of fistula. You may not be able to feel it, and you may have to go back in, revise it, or superficialize it. Um, and if they're older, you know, instead of doing a second stage, would it be better to just do one stage procedure with a graft that they can use right away instead of having a catheter for two to three months? Um, and so when you see these patients in clinic, I always ask, what's your dominant hand? What do you write with? Um, if they've had a stroke, uh, look at that um, side where that stroke is, and you could potentially, even if they're contracted, potentially do some sort of graft in that arm. Um, I've done it a few times. It's a little difficult, but it, it, you know, it can be done, and that way you can leave their good arm for them um, to use, um, and then you can avoid any complications in their um, dominant arm. Um, ask about previous catheters or uh, previous accesses. You'll you'll usually see it that that way. You know, should I be worried about central venous occlusion or stenosis? Um, any baseline neuropathy? Do you have tingling or numbness in your hands? And also get um, blood pressure differential right um, at both sides to see if there's some sort of um, inflow stenosis that you're not uh, noticing. I'm too short for this. Though. Okay. Um, also do an Allen's test, um, look for pacemakers. Um, I tend not to put a fistula graft on the side of the pacemaker because you'll likely have problems down the line and if they've had mastectomies or radiation. <clears throat> um, the pre-op imaging can include your vein mapping um, as well as an arterial duplex if you're worried that they have some sort of um, uh, arterial disease um, that's very important if you're planning a leg fistula. Make sure you get baseline ABIs. If they're complex access patient, which m most of our patients in Methodist are, we um, start off with venograms or arteriograms just so we know what we're working with. Um, and then we um, talked about the leg. Pat, my thing stuck. Um, so your fistula options, the simplest ones are uh, radius phallic, brachiocephalic, and um, 
with the proximal radial artery fistulas, transpositions, um, forearm transpositions, or a basilic transposition, and lastly, the brachial vein. The brachial vein um, is usually the last uh, vein left in a complex access patient in the arm anyways. Um, very, can have many branches, so um, sort of a difficult transposition, but can be done. And then in younger patients who are out of options, um, femoral fistulas are a possibility. Has uh, anybody do saphenous fistulas or seen one? Yeah, they. I've, um, there's a guy in Baton Rouge that does them, but the saphenous vein is very thin, and you don't get a lot of length in order to uh, bring it up to the surface. Um, so we uh, tend to go towards femoral vein fistulas. Um, okay, radiocephalic. Everybody's seen that. Uh, just some pictures of the of access. Okay, brachiocephalic, um, and then you want your what's what's your minimal um, diameter you want? Anybody? I, I heard six three for artery. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of answers. Yeah, two to three, right? Um, what about uh, your vein? At least three. Okay, and what about your arteriotomy? Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. So try like five to seven at least millimeters. Okay. And then so forearm transpositions. Some of these patients actually have really nice basilic veins that go all the way down to the arm. And um, usually the far, forearm is uh, a thinner region of the arm, so more superficial. Although if they thrombose, much more difficult to um, get opened again. So here is just a, a picture pre-op. We mark the basilic vein and then um, dissect that out, ligate the branches, and tunnel to the radial artery. And there it is matured. And again, it's away from the incision. So brachiobasilic fistulous transpositions, um, you can either do it in one stage or two stages. I personally prefer the um, two-stage fistula. And um, at the second stage, you can either transpose it, which means you redo the anastomosis and tunnel it, or actually just bring it up superficially. Um, and that's what I do. And then I'll make a skin flap kind of like uh, you know, a breast flap and then put that underneath the skin. And when you, if you do the transposition and you tunnel, just make sure, you know, you do a completion venogram because whenever that, that area that it goes into the axilla, it can kink in that area and then they'll get um, arm swelling. So other transpositions, here's an example of a, again, we talked about the high hell, the larger arm. Um, and so multiple failed grafts. She had a, a good cephalic vein. Um, and because her, you know, would be difficult to access because of her size, then that was transposed um, so that we brought it up so that it could be easily palpated for access. Um, this is uh, just an image of a brachial vein transposition. Again, um, HIV patient, so you want to think about uh, fistula instead of a graft. She had multiple previous AV graft infections. She's had failed uh, fistula, so that was the only thing she sort of had left. And so that's what we did there. Um, so the rule of six is for maturity. So vein diameter, six millimeters. Vein depth, depth has to be less than six. And the flows have to be greater than 600 for you to be able to uh, use it appropriately. Um, and certain patients, if the depth is uh, more or they're having issues accessing it despite a large vein diameter, you know it's matured, it's got a great throw, but they just can't stick it, um, you can do sort of a, a lipectomy where you can raise um, skin flaps, make two transverse incisions across the fistula, um, and just thin that area out overlying the fistula so that they can easily stick it. And also it helps with scarring the vein down because sometimes fistulas will sort of move around and that's how they infiltrate. They'll go through and through the fistula. 
uh, we leave a drain and we keep them overnight. Okay, so arm grafts. So different locations, uh, forearm loop, you could do upper arm, femoral chest wall. Um, the upper arm, we tend to try to do a loop AV graft. That way, if that fails, you still have your, uh, your deep axilla to do another AV graft. And when planning the orientation of your graft, think about most of the time, what is the number one problem in fish and grafts? Anybody? When you do a, a fishlogram, what do you usually find? A venous issue, right? Right. So when you lay out your graphs, you want to make sure that um, in the future, when you do a fishlogram, it's easy for you to be able to cannulate into the uh, central venous system from the graft. And then um, key thing to remember is don't waste your access real estate. Um, I tell my patients fistulas and grafts will not last you. They, they don't last forever. Our goal is to keep it lasting as long as possible, but you may need other access in the future. And so we need to save as much um, uh, real estate as possible. Um, okay, so leg transpositions in patients who have either central venous occlusion or are out of any um, options in the upper extremities. These are good for younger, healthier patients or for patients who've clotted everything off. Um, and, but they're not good for older patients, patients who've had um, wounds on their feet, um, diabetic neuropathy in their feet, congestive heart failure, or of chronic hypertension. These fishless can be very high flow. Um, here's a, a patient, she's 25, and she's pretty much out of option. She was dialyzing through a transhepatic catheter, um, but she had a, a good femoral vein, no wounds in her feet, palpable pulses, and so we did a femoral vein transposition. You need as much length as possible, so you need to go all the way to the adductor canal, split the adductor canal, and come all the, call, go all the way up um, to where it meets um, the saphenous vein, and that way you and then you have to loop it because you need enough length superficially for them to be able to stick two needles. Here's another guy that we did. Very skinny, aren't those nice veins? You never get those patients. Um, and then we, we do do skip incisions and we leave a drain. Recovery's not too bad. Sometimes they'll get um, a lot of leg swelling and so um, we'll put a compression stocking on um, them afterwards. Okay, lay graphs, again, plan for your future access, plan for failure, um, and so start low. If uh, you can do one on the lateral thigh to the um, SFA, that's better. That way you can save the, um, the groin for another access. It's also better for them because then they're not just exposing their whole leg in dialysis. Um, I know Tony and I talked about making clothing for these patients so that they could zip up and down so that they wouldn't have to take off everything. But um, so uh, again, here's the lateral thigh graft, easy to access. That area is not as sweaty as the groin can be, as you know, and in Houston, it's really hot. Um, again, that allows for um, future access. So start simple and work your way up. Think about this um, fistula or graft failing and what you would do next. Have an algorithm of uh, what what are the different options you have. Um, and then in really advanced patients, think about, uh, you know, a necklace AV graft, so uh, from an axillary artery and axillary vein across their chest. Remember, um, if they're going to get a median sternotomy, that will be a problem. Um, use a, a PTFE graft. Um, we, we have a few patients at Methodist that, um, that have had a few of these, actually. Um, and then it, in terms of uh, a central venous occlusion, uh, in young patients who would tolerate a median sternotomy, um, doing an axillary atrial venous bypass, that sort of fixes that problem and that leaves that arm with uh, other options. And here you, uh, you'd use a ringed PTFE 8 millimeter going from the axillary vein. You do need a cardiac surgeon, so on board with you, so don't, uh, you know, try this on your own. Um, and then they usually do the atrial part. Um, okay, and then heroes. So 
these tend, do tend to clot off easily, um, and that's what I tell my patients, but much easier to declot. So it's part catheter, part um, graft. The graft portion is attached to the artery, and then the catheter's inside, but it's basically like a, you know, a tunnel dialysis catheter. Um, and when you declot these, you need to do it under x-ray, because if you put the balloon past the catheter, you can actually yank the whole catheter up. And again, th that's for patients with central venous stenosis, but you have to be able to get through that in order to put this in. Um, and uh, we're part of a study called the surfacer where you actually, if, if you have an occlusion you can't get through with traditional means, um, we put a sheath through and we sort of puncture through the skin to get across the occlusion. And that's it. <laughs>